Vanessa Haywood. Haywood Sands. Is it Haywood Sands? Yeah, ain't like it's now just Sands. I but dropped you have the... to do this. Welcome. Oh, do we the... do it? Cheers. Oh, welcome to the ice cream interviews. Cheers. Ching ching. Ching ching. All the way in Northuk. Listen, this is what's the time? It's lunchtime already. This is breakfast. <laughs> this is breakfast, eh? <laughs> breakfast. Uh, so hungry. Art Matthews said when I pitched up at his house at eight o'clock in the morning with an ice cream, he went like, this is the breakfast of champions. Mm -hmm. and, cool. then, and then you're spoiling us with a with a with quite a nice ice cream from a local... This is fancy. Um, ...place. Kristen's. Right? I was kick, wondering why you were driving so far to get ice cream. So kick this must kick be ass. It's, look at the slogan, kick ass ice cream. Kick ass ice cream. It is kick ass ice cream. We get this most weekends because it's mm. so close and obviously Max loves it and it's it's good wow. homemade ice cream. Oh, this is Do great. you approve? What flavor did you get? I got the vanilla honeycomb. Caramel. Oh, honeycomb. honeycomb. Oh, yummy. It's not as sweet though, no? That's why it's nice. You don't want like this sugar overload. It's just a yeah. nice, a nice it's not medium. as sweet as the... The shop ice cream. Exactly. You no. Know? It's proper Italian ice cream. Um, when I was driving out, um, obviously I saw you at the mutts because Ryan was running the mutts and just kicking ass again. Last year I know he won the hundred minor, yeah. obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and then he won and that thought, yeah, he won now as well, yeah. Yeah, and when you and I decided listen, we're gonna have a, have an ice cream interview when I told you about what we talk about, we talk about life, we talk about love, we talk about the challenges that we face, we talk about mental well-being, we talk about being human, you know? And you said, yeah, let's do it. And then after that, I started thinking, but where did I meet you? And even now when you spoke about Nico Panagia, I was like, was it through Nico or did we do an Edgar's catalog? Job, those days. We definitely, that, that, that was about 99, 2000, around about there. It was definitely Joburg. It was Joburg days, and I think it was actually pre our television careers. It was modeling days. And I think you're right. I think it was actually Edgar's. Yeah, I think we, did, a, I think we did an Edgar's catalog together. I think you're right. That was like. Did you do Edgar's? Ed, Edgar's lots catalog? of Edgar's. <laughs> lots of Edgar's. It was definitely. It feels like then. it was like 300 years ago. No, you still look the same. You still look the same. You, you don't eat like a fine red wine. Did you? You, you like a fine you had red hair, wine. You had hair back then, and that's the only difference. I had but lots you, of hair. But you don't have wrinkles now. I do. I just know how to sit in the light. <laughs> <Just sit. laughs> Botox. Botox. <laughs> but you don't have wrinkles either. I look after my skin. Yeah, I yeah. actually do as well. That's good. Men I, I should. I like men. You got a sponsor. I've got a sponsor. Like great product from from France. Which one? Um, it's through Skin Logic and George. Mhm. Mm Beauté Pacifique. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Very expensive. Very yeah. fancy. Yeah. Um, no, and I like a man that takes care of his skin. A lot of men don't look after their skin. No, they think I it's have kind to. of like too feminine or whatever. I, why do you want to look 70 when you're 50? Yeah. If whether you're a man or a woman. No, but it's not just that. It's if I'm, I'm at a stage of my life where I, I want to see if I can get to a healthy 100 years, you know? Wow. Um, Is that what you want? If, without a doubt. I wouldn't mind 90. My grandfather but if and you go 90, you might as well just go 100. <laughs> well, I th the thing is, I saw my grandparents' age, obviously. My, both my grandparents' parents passed away at the age of 96. And what happened with them was the physical. I think, I think they were still enjoying, not I think, they were enjoying life and enjoying each other. But my grandfather's body got very, very sore. He had back problems from, I think, even before the Second World War. He was a Spitfire pilot. Oh, wow for the Royal Air Force. Oh, wow. He got shot down in the Second World War and he oh, was wow. a, he was a, P, a POW. But he had a lot of health problems since the war and since being a prisoner and he had a bad back and everything. Anyway, he was Aina. Like the last 10 years of his life, he said to me, I'm just, I'm sore. 
you know, and I take a handful of pills every day for my heart, for arthritis, for this, that. Um, and he eventually like said, like, I'm ready to, I'm ready, you know, <laughs> I can live a good life. Yeah, but I, I do think that I don't want to be sore. keep healthy and mm. keep on moving. That's why we need to prepare. I mean, that's why you need to keep your mind healthy, keep your body healthy. They were some yoga. Stay away from sugar. They were both very healthy. Stay away healthy. from alcohol. Stay away from overeating. You know, we need to fast. We need to. My grandparents never overindulged in anything. It was always very good balance. They had a toot seven days a week, but just one little drunky. Every evening they would have one little thingy, little bowl of peanuts or something, a little snack. Then dinner time, and then they'd watch their TV or play a game of cards or whatever. But they were very fit, and um, they were very fit until they were in their eighties. Lots of lots of hikes and walks and trout fishing and you know time away and yeah so they were they they looked they looked after their health and that's why they lived so long and they had a good life so you've got a good chance of genetically getting there mm. yeah i just don't want to my, be my, my cardiologist i was 28 when i got a pacemaker i did not know that about you mm. i'm on my third pacemaker what yeah it's so obviously genetic. Kind of, but it was also sarcoidosis. It was what? Sarcoidosis. It's like a, it's a disease mm -hmm. that breaks down the binding tissues of your organs as muscles. Wow. So the binding tissues collapse. Were you but, diagnosed but, but with I'm it? I'm over that. I mean, obviously, oh. I get treatment for that. But what is it? A vi is it a virus? Kleppy in my heart. Oh my gosh. No, it's a disease. It is some sort of One disease. One out of, I think, 150,000 or 200,000 people get it. It's weird. It's quite rare, yeah. But in any case, why yeah. I'm saying that is, um, so I see a cardiologist every year, Dr. Faisal Gulfalogat is mm -hmm. in, at Christian Barnett. So I've known him for 20 years. So every year I see Dr. Faisal. And last year I said to Faisal, I said, listen, doc, I think... I really have this overwhelming feeling of I want to become 100 years old. He said, Ivan, by the time you get to 100, the medical um, technology would be so well developed that you'll probably go to 120. Wow. So brace yourself. Okay. Wow. It's the fastest moving industry in the world. Yeah. Is medical tech. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're living. We are living a lot longer because of medicine but i think also not only that we also more aware of our health which is good some of us yeah i was in spain now this month i've never seen a society like that 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 smokes that much yeah i, I thought south africa was bad yeah it's a smoking nation oh, wow. everybody Same. smokes and not vapes and not ecos or whatever you call them ciggies Cigarettes See, and the youngsters. Yeah, I, can't, well. I can't remember when, when last did I hear that word. They smoke, they smoke, and their laws they aren't like they are here. You can pretty much smoke anywhere you want to, which is a little bit irritating because I really can't stand cigarette smoke. Um, yeah, it was quite frightening because they're not an overweight nation like we are. People for the most part are slim, but then they all smoke. Yeah, it's a bit silly. Anyway, um, so over the years, you, you you kept on modeling, then went into TV. Mm-hmm. Never was, acting. Why, why did you never start acting? Why did I stop? Or why did I not why really get into it? Why did you never start it? acting, like drama what? acting? Well, I mean, like I did. And I'll, so what, what happened in my career, I mean, I really, I'm technically, I am still modeling. I do the odd um, job, but I stopped, stopped sort of about, well, not, yeah, two years ago, I started going to fewer auditions and casting. So I've kind of been modeling now forever. But I mean, I've been acting since I was five. I was doing sta predominantly stage productions and singing and even high school amateur stage. Through the modeling, obviously with TV commercials, you have to act. Hmm. So was acting then and getting more and more experience like that. And then eventually I studied drama 
um, in Cape Town. And then I was doing quite a bit of television, as you know. Um, I really enjoyed TV presenting, I must say, because it's, um, it's real. It can be yourself interviewing people or whatever. No. Um, and then started trying to focus more on acting. And then I got some tiny roles as extras and whatever in a couple of movies. And then got District 9. Um, District 9. You forgot that. That was the biggie. And, nine. Yeah, and I went to, and of course we got, um, what, three uh, Academy Award nominations. I didn't win any, unfortunately, but, um, and then shortly after the Academy Awards, I actually went to LA and I wanted to just, I was going sort of on a recce to see what it would be like. And Frank, obviously, also a few of the South African actors, as like yourself as well, will, I mean, you know how hectic the I, US can yeah, be. Yeah, I never went. I've got a couple of friends yeah. there. Frank the did. Industry. Frank went, right? Frank went. Yeah. Neil, Neil Sandler is doing really well. Neil Sandler is in a position now where they fly him in from South Africa. Mm, that's nice. Which is great. Yeah. He doesn't stay there permanently anymore. Yeah. Um, but you know what it's like? It's still cutthroat. So I got to LA and I was like, yeah, I've been in this like... You know, and you uh, thought, okay, District 9 is going to open doors. They give zero you-know-whats. Oh, my word. Now, let... Really? That, that oh. not give you some, like, serious credit? No, it's, it's hilarious. They're literally, like, you cannon fodder. They don't care. Unless you... Yeah, and it also didn't help that I, there's definitely like a little bit of xenophobia, like the fact that I wasn't an American was definitely yeah. like a thing. That's the whole thing. I, I, think, I think that's the thing. I think it was, if it was an American movie and you shot it in America. Yeah. And never mind the fact that the movie was about xenophobia. I really like the foreigners. <laughs> no. Anyway, I didn't spend very long there because I got there and I spent some time in, in Hollywood and I was, oh. oh and then you decided, thought, come on, man. I mean, I was, I was older as well. I think at the time I was 30 and I had a very settled lifestyle in Joburg. I had my home, I had my stuff. And going to LA meant I was going to have to start from scratch with nothing, no car, no furniture, a couple of you know, clothes in my suitcase, spending rands and dollars, which, and, and back then, the rand was also very, I think back then we were at 18 or 20. I mean, it's weaker now, but it was going to cost me a fortune to get going. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a true thespian in that I'm not prepared to suffer for my craft. <laughs> I like what you're saying. <laughs> because I'm also an entrepreneur. And, you know, I'm, and you still want to enjoy life. And I'm a realist. And I love and that about... things that you enjoy. You still enjoy mountain biking. You still enjoy the outdoors. I, a true thespian, in my opinion, <laughs> do not mind sitting in a dark, cold studio for the whole day to shoot their scene at the end of the day. That makes them super happy. Unfortunately, that makes me super depressed because, especially on a nice day, I know there's some waves that I can go surf and I know there's a mountain that I can go climb and I know there's a mountain bike in the garage waiting to be ridden. So I, I understand completely what you're saying. And I am a And you've got to weigh that up. And I am a true creative. I mean, I'm an interior designer now, so I've always stayed within the creative space. So you have that out, you know, that outlet. I have that outlet, that thank you. That creative outlet. Yeah. yeah. And I've just started DJing, so that's also a no, creative really? outlet. What's your DJ name? So maybe I should manifest it, but like put it out into the universe. I just don't want to look like a football two years from now when people go, oh, I remember Vanessa said she's doing. No, so Sue Dumini, Sue Dumini, one of my closest friends, JP Dumini's um, wife. Wife, yeah. Um, she and I are going to do a duo, which is a bit doff because you only, one person can only DJ at a time, but we like the idea of a duo and we, we love traveling together and we both love music and dancing and we're doing the DJ lessons together now and we want to start a duo called the Desert Angels. You and why right. Desert Angels was because when we were at Africa Burn earlier this year, we were in the desert, these two blondes and friends of ours called us the Desert Angels. And I was like, that's a cool name. 
Why don't we be the... Did you do verboden middels at Africa Run? We we can't, that's going to be off the record. (laughs) Uh, At least you know what verboden middels are. (laughs) Van, we decided we're going to talk about how tough it is being a footballer's wife. (laughs) In your case, how tough it is being the wife of Probably one of the top trial runners in the world, eh? Where's Ryan ranked now in the world? Number you really one. want to know where, oh, where he's ranked? I thought you said, where is he right now? Let's start with that. Do you know what he's doing right now? Probably running through some deserts. He's in France right, right, he's in France right now, running in the sleet and the rain. It's freezing there. He's on a seven-hour training run. <laughs> seven hours today, five hours tomorrow, and five hours on Sunday. <clears throat> He's a machine. Yeah. Yeah. And he ranked, how much is he ranked in the world? Uh, the rankings are a little bit, oh, uh, he told me the other day. Um, so the rankings are a little bit dif- difficult in the trail running industry because it hasn't been, um, I don't want to use the word bastardized because that's a little bit <laughs> like unfair, but the trail running society for many years has been trying to avoid mainstream sport and athletics South Africa and South Africa and athletics worldwide because it's extremely, um, as you know, um, I don't want to say it's very controlled and I mean, it, it can be really negative in that, in that light. It needs to be controlled when it comes to illegal substances, absolutely, or sport. I do not believe in unfair sport, uh, unfair anything. Um, but trail running is like a, it's a, it's a, it's a naturalist sport, like a lot of hippies that, that, that love doing it and whatever, they don't want to be controlled and like stick to your lane or whatever. So it's not a, it's not a sport that's really been, it's getting there, but it's not a sport that's been completely formalized and categorized. And this is who's number one, like tennis, this is who's number one, oh, two, yeah. three, and there aren't specific race series or whatever that interlink that are able to categorize and also because it's such a wide sport in that they're different distances so who's number one okay who's number one in marathon distances who's number one in 100 milers who's number one in 100 k's so 80 k 100 k and 160 k are are dubbed are called ultras um, they're the long distances. Um, and it's also very difficult to categorize because it's not just, you're not just running on a track or on a flat on a road. Each race has its own challenges, like UTMB, Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc, that's in the Alps in France, has 16,000 meters of climbing in one sure. race. That's two Mount Everests that you run yeah. in one race in 160 Ks. The professionals run that in 24 hours. Then well, you- mountain biking terms over 160 Ks, you'll probably only climb 3,000 meters. Exactly. Four at Maybe the most. Three and a half. Four at the most. Four at the most. Yeah. Not even. There are some, like the, the level 100 mile <clears> mountain <throat> bike race has a, a lot of climbing. I've done that. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's difficult to categorize, but anyway, he, he definitely used to be sort of top five world rankings. He's obviously a little bit older now, so maybe sort of top, he's definitely still in the top 20. Um, he's just come sixth at the, um, in Valderan, which is in Spain. That's why we were in Spain wow. now. That was a hundred K. He would have liked to have done better, but it was a preparation race for UTMB, like a training race. And the, he came first in his age category. He hates me saying that, like, don't say that. First in his age category, and then the five guys that came before him were all like in their 20s and early 30s. So I was like, you can't dismiss that. Yeah. You're not a bully, but you are older. And that being said, the guy, the guy who just won the hard rock 100 mile in Colorado and a hard rock is also a horrible race like UTMB. It is hectic. 47 year old one. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like the other day I was surfing and, and I started talking to the, to the guys in the water, but they're all like groms, you know, like 20, 21, 22. You do know they're young enough to be our kids. 
Tja. Und wenn der geht, wenn wir start conversation, and oft an hour I go like, oh, I'm done. And they're like, what? Where are you going? I said, no, gosh, I'm tired. And one night he just said, David, you must do more push-ups. <laughs> so I didn't go like, hey, God. I'm like 28 years older than you. Mm, wait till you in your 40s. Yeah. <laughs> you go like, hey, but just do more push-ups. <laughs> yeah, we're getting older. Mm. It's amazing the passion that you um, that you have for Ryan's career. Mm. Which wants to ask me the question, how much have you given up of your own life? <laughs> so it's so funny that when you and I were discussing having this interview and the and the sort of the topic that we were going to go with, I suggested this topic because for years I've wanted to speak up about it, write a book. You know, I don't have enough. Maybe if I interviewed multiple footballers' wives, I'd have enough content for a book. I don't think my life's that interesting for the book to just be about me. And I've also always been very scared to speak up about it because I know that people are critical of the footballers' wives because they think that our lives are so easy. Oh, she gets everything she yeah. wants and needs and got her Louis Vuitton handbags and travels the world. Life's easy. Yeah. I know that because I used to think that before I was married to a professional sportsman. Um, and because the footballers' wives don't speak up and we're in the background and we on the sideline and being supportive, nobody really asks us. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because you're Ryan's wife. I'm Ryan's wife. I'm not Vanessa. You're Vanessa. Yeah. And like Nana, when I said... Um, JP Dumini's wife, Sue. Yeah. I was very mindful of that because I know I don't like being called Ryan's wife. Sue is Sue, Vanessa is Vanessa. We are individuals. We are amazing in our own way. You know, but we, yeah, it happens. And what's um, annoying is I, you know, uh, not annoying, but um, I mean, I, I had this whole acting career that I was talking about earlier and I'd been in LA I'd come back to South Africa. I was then about to move to the UK for my acting career. I was two seconds away from packing my bags because I like British film and it is a little bit easier to break into than the US. And I had some contacts there and I met Ryan. So in essence, ultimately, I did give up everything for our relationship. I don't want to say for him. I was happy to do so because I didn't want to start over and leave everything in South Africa and all my comforts and then go and spend pounds or dollars. Um, but I did give up a lot. I wanted to. Um, but it meant that years later, 16 years later, I found myself last year and particularly at the beginning of this year starting to feel resentful and that is a problem um and the thing is like we as these foot and i think we, let's just call it footballers wives but i mean like we're looking at yeah. all sport yeah we're looking yeah, at yeah. cricket rugby trail running whatever and it is after elke sport man yeah, after, after, yes, after exactly. Elke sport man. exactly that stands a woman yeah <laughs> Um, and in, in, in individual sports is even harder because the, the sport doesn't get the support that, that a team sport gets. It is a lot easier. And I used to date a rugby player in my early 20s, so I, I know. Um, the team sport has far more of a su support structure. There's a lot going a lot around, around them that supports them. And um, look, and the the sportsmen themselves have also sacrificed a lot to be where they are um and but they chose that life i mean ultimately that's what they want to do yes us sports wives chose our life but when you get into it you don't really know what it entails 
and it grows, of course. So when I met Ryan, he wasn't ne nearly as well known as he is now and his career really grew and he did better and better. It meant less time at home. Our relationship grew with the, the career growing and things evolved and changed. And I didn't really know what I was getting into to a degree. And then, yeah, you find automatically because the career, sports career takes so much time and energy and focus that you have no choice. Yes, I kind of had my own life and friends and whatever, and uh, but your life automatically just becomes your spouse's, your, your husband or your partner's life because everything's been about running and trail running in our lives for 16 years. That is intense. All our travels, all our travels have been because of his career. We don't travel for fun. We went to Spain now because he was racing. Um, oh, but her life's so glamorous. <clears throat> she goes overseas once or twice a year. Um, so glam. Cricketers' wives go overseas several times a yeah. year. We don't, we don't see them when we're there. And it's... It's not easy and you're living out of a suitcase and when you've got older kids or like, do you take them out of school? And I know with the cricketers, with the older kids, the, the wives don't even travel anymore because the kids have to be at school and they need more of a settled lifestyle and whatever. Yeah, same with you now, you know? Yeah, we can't take Max everywhere. And when we travel, we end up in tiny villages and mountains where there's not much going on. And get this, Ryan goes out training. I'm gonna look at the camera every single day while we are away on these holidays. He goes out training for hours. I often have to drop him off at points, then drive hours to go and fetch him at another point. I'm assisting, I'm helping him in his training. <laughs> um, and there's no school, so I'm looking after Max like 24 seven. Ryan's focused, so it's not like he's like, woohoo, let's go for a party or let you know on holiday. He's not. Let's he's, go have he's, some tequila. No, he's focused. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm cooking and cleaning. Yeah. Because we are in an Airbnb. There's no lavish, fancy hotels. Yeah. We're in an Airbnb. I'm cooking and cleaning and doing grocery shopping and I'm homeschooling and I, I'm not in Barcelona where I can go sightseeing. We're in a tiny village in the mountains. I'm not complaining. I just think that people, it is divine. Sure, you're not complaining, but, but obviously there's, it created this massive gap in your relationship. Yeah. That you need to bridge. Yeah. And like, I like, like with anything else, would you compare it to guys that's got serious corporate um, uh, careers as well that spend so much time at work absolutely and, and then, all the energy in, in in that specific job and then get home, get home and uh, continue working like, they're not present because they present. continue i've got loads of friends who have husbands and sorry i know this is very I know women that's like that as yeah well. so you know women i don't know too many women in high powered careers and i sorry this is not like a man woman thing but i'm speaking from my experience but a few girlfriends who've got husbands and partners that are in a powerful management corporate positions. And they get home at night and they're exhausted and they're not present and they've got to work, continue to, they need to work in the evenings and so on. Like it's, and yes, everything about their lives is about their partner's career. And I just feel like there's a real imbalance um, and I said this to you earlier and uh, it's something I really want to speak a lot about going forward and that's that in the 21st century, women, particularly mothers, and because of my mum, I can resonate, we are at the point now where we are wearing too many hats. It's impossible to balance anything. Mm. And I read an article a couple of years ago that the worldwide numbers of cancer cancer diagnosis and and um, heart disease heart amongst disease. women oh, yeah. women <clears throat> has increased substantially because of stress historically women would stay at home we didn't work um, we took care of the home we took care of the kids mm -hmm took care of hubby when he was home. And the stress we dealt with was home environment stress, stress with the kids. 
Well, the 21st century, very few people I know, very, couple, very, very few couples uh, where there's like a housewife. All the women I know, all the moms I know are now working full-time jobs. But nothing's changed at home. Still doing the grocery shopping, still cooking, still cleaning, still managing the kids. Kids don't want their dads really in the first 10, 12 years of their lives. It's, 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 it's nature. They want their mommies, you know, for the most part. Um, sure. And it's an energy exchange. It's, it's emotion. Um, kids can be really draining. I love Max, but it takes, a, I mean, a lot of energy to bring up kids. Yeah, so the point I'm trying to make is that, and now we're all working and we still got our basic jobs, you know, taking care of the house and groceries and this, that and the other. Something's got to give, like, mm. it's hard. And then, in like so my are, so case, are, are you saying that that you wish your husband was more involved? No, no, no. So um, Ryan, Ryan is a very hands-on dad, and luckily we communicate very well. So through communication over the last couple of years, and also post-COVID, I mean, Ryan never used to cook, never used to clean. Now he's a whiz. Oh, wow. Um, and because my work has increased substantially, uh, my business is doing very well. Thank you. Um, he does a lot of the cooking now. He also doesn't mind it. I hate cooking. I'm good at other things. I can cook. I can put together a good dish. Do I want to? No. Anyway, and he's very hands-on with Max. And, and by his own admission, he'll tell you years ago, he wasn't as involved as in a supportive role in terms of fetching and carrying Max from school. Like I did all of that. I was working, but I would drop Max at school, fetch Max from school, do all the extra meals, da da da, and working full time. Whereas, like in the last two, a year and a half, yeah, it's only been a year and a half. I was able to find my voice and speak up and say I'm not coping. I don't want to do all the school runs, all the extra meal runs. Um, and I don't have the time or energy. We need to share the load. Um, and this is where au pairs would come in, I guess. And not everyone can afford an au pair. And also, I don't want an au pair because I do want to be present in Max's life. In a few years' time, he's going to want nothing to do with me because he's going to be a teenager. Um, so we've got very good at starting to balance that, but it wasn't always there. And I think the women make the mistake of not, because we nurturers and also because generally men are sort of the alphas in the, in the relationship. I think we sometimes we tend to just keep quiet and just sort of allow, you know, just keep the peace. But it's important to communicate. And I was very bad by, with communicating in the past. I'm only finding my voice now to be able to share with Ryan and say. But maybe he was bad in listening. <laughs> I'm like, could you say that? Guys, guys <laughs> tend not to listen that much and that's why women maybe don't communicate that much or they, they, they started to, um, they started in the beginning and then they faded away. That, that did happen with us. I find as I get older, I tend to listen more. You know, I think it's, to, I think it's to do, yeah, you know, it's a, Definitely to do with, 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 with dying of your own ego and killing off your own ego and mastering that and mm. that connects to maturity. What I want to get to is, is what's the most challenging thing for you to being the other half of, of someone that's got such a mindset on their career and and you lose yourself. So committed to their, 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 their sports career. You lose yourself. And that is sad. Tell me about that. Um, I think it just, it automatically happens. I don't think you're trying to lose yourself. It's just that you're putting so much energy into somebody else. And, and moms will get this. And it, you don't have to be married to a professional sportsman for this to happen. You're focused on your kids. You're focused on your home. You're focused on your career. You're focused on your hubby. Um, and one day you wake up like I did this year and you kind of go, where am I in this equation? And who am I? And what do I even want anymore? What do I even like anymore? I've just given up so much for everybody around me. 
And I'm an empath and I, <clears throat> I give, 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 and I take very little. And Ryan's so good with that nowadays because he's mindful and he says to me, stop giving. Take some time for yourself. So he's great that way. He's become very good that way. Um, because I need a reminder and for somebody to go, it's okay to say no. And I also want to help everybody, mm. you know. Um, so I lost myself and, you know, Ryan and I nearly lost ourselves in the process as well in our relationship. Like we had to like, we still still in that process of just, and I think a lot of couples can relate to this and it's important to have these discussions because I think a lot of people feel very alone in this and they shouldn't. Marriage is hard. Life is hard. Relationships are hard. Men and women are very different. Um, and we need to be talking about these things because the divorce rate worldwide is now officially 50%. 10 years ago, it was 25%. In 10 years, half of the marriages worldwide are ending up in divorce. That is not okay. Mm. That is not okay. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why that's happening. And, and one of them obviously is that this, that women are now having to take on careers. We need dual incomes. Nobody's coping anymore. Men aren't listening. Mm. Women aren't talking or not, uh, we are, but the, uh, you know, like, and, and yeah. And life is stressful, people are working hard, mental health is a big issue, um, people give up too easily, divorce is too easy. Um, it's, yeah, and, um, and so, but, but I also, I have to take responsibility and I have to stand up and go, okay, Ryan, everything's been about your career for 16 years. It's been amazing. It's been an incredible journey. We've made wonderful memories, We've seen the world. I'm super grateful. Um, and like when we went to the mat, I said to him, I don't even want to go to the mat. I don't want to go to a race village. I've been to a thousand race villages. I have supported you and crewed you at so many races. I have taken shoes off your feet covered in cow poo at three o'clock in the morning. I have been there through all of it. Yes, you did the hard work, but like there I am as well. Like yeah. I'm there, I'm there. Yeah, and nobody, nobody really sees that or appreciates it. I've had very, very, very few people. In 16 years, I've maybe had four people come to me and say, oh, you're doing a good job, well done. And good luck for crewing Ryan tomorrow in his race. Thank you. And like, no, isn't, isn't, isn't that amazing? It, it's still, still four it's, times it's still in the biggest thing for a human, any human, to 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 have a sense of belonging. You know, do you know so what? By, it's, by it's, someone telling you, listen, it's you know, just a hanger on her. Affirmation. It's just that thing. Hey, I I, I kind of like belong. And it's, I belong with 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 this crew. I belong with mm. this this thing. It's so, just, so so. I, it's just a, it's an acknowledgement of somebody seeing you. I see you. Yeah. And, and it's, it's affirmation. It's saying like, because you don't understand in my life and other sports wives of sportsmen will tell you this. Everything's about that, that person being on a pedestal. Society yeah. worships them. Yeah, they think, couldn't do something wrong if they tried. I think especially in the, in, 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 in the individual sports, you know. And in the team sports, I mean, the rugby players are worshipped worldwide. Yeah, yeah it never we, used to be like that. It's, it's because of social media that it's just... Oh, yeah, 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 thing. absolutely. And they're held on a pedestal, hey? You can't do anything wrong. Um, so so what's, what's, your, what's your antidote? What's your, if, you, if you have a feeling of a bit of... Wow, what am I doing with my life? Because I'm, I'm helping. I'm, 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 what's that word that you used? Uh, 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 I'm crewing for. Oh yeah, crewing. I'm crewing for Ryan. What's your antidote for that? Do, do, do you just go like, hey, this is white noise. Let's focus on my purpose, on raising Max and and creating a home and doing my career, which is now interior mm. decorating. Do you just keep on focusing on that, or, or do you sometimes go and really doubt where you are? Um, 
so what happened for me was it's been a process so, and, I, and, and also I think it's an age thing and experience and now being in my 40s I know what I want I'd like to think I'm a little bit more confident than I used to be when I was younger and um, I and I guess you could call, I mean, it's not just men who have midlife crises, you know, it's a horrible word or phrase, but we do get to a point in our lives, especially when our kids are a little bit older. Max is not even a teenager yet, he's just about to turn eight. And you've got him through the worst of it, like there's, you've got out the trenches. When the, when the kid's under the age of four, those four, first four years are horrible. How couples even stay married in those first four years, I don't know. It's not fun. I'm just going to put it out there. If you're ever thinking about having kids, come to me first. Kids are amazing, but people don't know what it, it, what it entails. And you know how many couples end up in divorce after the second kid's born? Oh, because then it's a shit show. <laughs> They always say, oh, have another one because it's got to have a friend. No, having one child's one child. When you have two, it's like having eight. I, I just love your honesty on this. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's hardcore. I've been thinking about putting together a TED Talk, telling people the hard facts of having kids. Of oh, having kids. And getting married. I respect people hugely yeah. who opt for no marriage, I don't judge anybody in this world unless they are physically hurting somebody or an animal. You choose your what you want. I respect people who don't want to get married and I respect people who don't want to have kids. Yeah. Because society says, no, but you have to get married. Yeah. And then when you're married, you have to have a child. Yeah. And God help you if you only have one. You know how many people have asked me, when are you going to have another child? Still, I'm 46. Max is nearly eight. They're still asking me, when am I going to have another child? No, <laughs> one is fine. <laughs> one is fine. I'm busy with a book now about being realistic about getting married. Stuff that, that you're, 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 well, you don't have to. I can tell to. you now, we're having a discussion now about marriage and you don't have to and it's hard and it's beautiful, but it's, it's hard. It's, there's so many people, married people that ask me, when are you going to get married? No. Then I, then I start this conversation. No, with you. don't. Like, what, what, what do you think I should do? And then it's wives, husbands, whatever. But then they answer me when, the, when, when their partner is not there. Mm. So the wife of a friend will go like, Ivan, don't worry about it. Mm. Just, just do you, you know. Just, mm. you, you, <laughs> just stay where you are. Don't, don't. There's no rush. <laughs> no, it's, it's beautiful in that yeah. it has a partnership and I'm not somebody, I manage fine on my own. I like alone time. But at the end of the day, also, we are social beings and we are meant to live in little tribes. So family life is, is good. And I think also what's sad is the 21st century has added a lot of stress to family units f for a, a whole yeah. bunch of reasons why. Um, and... You just, it's constant work. And I hate to say it's hard work. Marriage is hard work because that doesn't sound fun. It's just, it's constant work yeah. and communication. And yeah. um, is that noise bothering and, and you? It's serving. No, that's fine. That's fine. Because you and, can and, and close it's like door. serving each other. I've realized that if you're in it for yourself, then you're, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Mm. You need to absolutely... Huh? Am I right when I say that? Absolutely. That's actually exactly what you did. I mean, you gave us I so much. Because I, I really want us to move back to the challenges of, of, of being a, a wife to a serious A-class sports star slash sports so, professional. I'm just, I'm just going to say this in, straight away. It's hard. What's the biggest challenge of that as the time... It's lonely. Yeah. Um, not so much now, but uh, when I say not so much now, maybe only in the last year, Ryan's traveled less. But um, there's a lot of travel and I especially feel sorry for the cricketers. Um, look, a lot of the time the, the wives have are able to go with but maybe I'm using a, a bad example because they do travel with them because they travel for such long periods but other sports so like 
Salomon and Red Bull don't pay for me to go with Ryan anywhere. Or Max. No. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, it's a lot of time away from home. And so there'll be um, big travel blocks, um, which is hard. I have no family in Cape Town and I have a very small, if non-existent, support system. Yeah. Um, I've never had a live-in housekeeper. I've never had a full-time housekeeper, ever. And I work full-time and I have since I met Ryan. I've never been a housewife. Um, that's changing now because also, once again, I'm finding my voice and I'm saying, this is what I need to cope. This is what I need to be happy. And this is just physical support. Hey? This is not even the emotional. That's, that's voicing, that's that's, voicing yeah. your... My needs. Your needs too, right? No, no. And I expect the same from That's him. Correct. If he needs something from me, he must tell me. You grumpy every and evening. Then, and you guys are very happy example. listening to each other. Yeah, and, and I'm going through perimenopause at the moment, which means I'm a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an, that's, a, that's a vlog. That's an interview for a whole other day. Hormones. Those are fun. Anyway, but I try to be nice. Uh, 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 so like the other night he said to me, are you okay? You seem very on edge. Um, he communicates well. He's like, oh, like, are you okay? And I just went, I promise you've done nothing wrong. It's just the hormones. I am so irritable. I want to kill everybody. But then he knows. Like he hasn't done anything wrong and he knows to just sort of be kind and be I patient. That's why it's such a good runner because he's constantly running away. He was running away from me. <laughs> um, yeah, and then so the other big thing for me, and I don't know about other sport types, but certainly since Ryan has started doing ultras, it's the training that gets yeah, to the me. Ultras are, are So never mind the fact that he'll travel for three weeks to one to a month at a time. And when Max was six months old, Ryan was away for three months. He went to the Himalayas. Nearly died. Oh, that's another conversation that we can have is how high risk his career is. And I've got to sit at home and sort of watch the dot on the screen and hope he doesn't die. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he was away. And Max was six months old and he was away for nearly three months. He was in the Himalayas for two months. No, no, it was two months that he was away. Yeah. In the Himalayas for a month, came home for two days and then went to the US for another month. Sure. Um, and there I am with this tiny baby. At, at the time, I had a housekeeper once a week and no family in Cape Town. And no, I'm not playing the victim here, but it was hard. And I should have. Sure. My fault and his fault. He should have said, how can I support you while I am away? My fault in saying, what are we or what are you going to do so yeah. that I've got somebody around, whether it's my mom or oh. a nanny, to because assist. That, that, that's kind of like the message that we want, that, that we want to get across with yeah, this we conversation did. is to, to let people know that, listen, there are ways out and, 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 and the proper way and, and the most successful way is probably going to be to communicate. Absolutely. And looking back on it now, and I wanted to say this earlier, I think for the first seven years of my and Ryan's relationship, I did communicate a lot about my needs. And to, by his own admission, he didn't hear me. As you were saying earlier, is he listening? And I think that was because, and he's admitted it to me now, because he was hyper-focused. Yeah. He, by his own admission, he will tell you, I did not come first in his life. Yeah. His career did. That's a hard pull to swallow. Yeah. So going back to the what is it like being a professional sportsman's wife? Well, be prepared to come second. Yeah. They are professional sports people do not and become the best at what they are doing. If they don't have that attitude. If they don't have that attitude and that focus and that drive. And I respect that. I get it. It's just not so, hard. It's just not easy to be on the other side. So lastly, what 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 is the solution? Bless you. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry Bless for you. that. Um, what, what was the solution for you? What was the turning points? The turning points been more, more recently in this journey that I am on. I have found this beautiful, consciously connected network in Cape Town. They're actually countrywide called Solo, the Solo Community. Um, 
and they, uh, for the lack of a better phrase, to try and explain what it's about to the layman out there, it's just really a bunch of hippies. But we're not hippies wearing tie and dye, it's just people who sure. are looking more towards natural spiritual modalities for mental health and happiness and healing and it can range from anything from natural medicines like psilocybin um, to kundalini to breath work just things to help you not yeah, as i said not just with mental things, health things but to, to pull yourself towards yourself exactly and, and, that, and to just realize ground and growth and to realize that you don't need the true joys the true joy comes within yourself and that it, that exactly. Ryan's not going to give you the true exactly. joy it might make you happy or unhappy yeah but those are emotions that's not lasting you know it's, it's emotions that what you offer is, is, is true joy where you embrace suffering and you embrace you recognize emotions and you let them go but yeah, true joy is within yourself. It comes from within. It's, and I had, no one else is going to give it to you. And I had lost that joy. And I don't even think I was looking for it in Ryan. I just, I'd lost just the joy lost and it. I'd lost my focus. I like that, what you said there. You just lost it. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you kept it, then you wouldn't have gone like, yeah, okay, but I need this and I need this. That's the weird thing about love I've learned is, it's got no boundaries. So if you love someone and he's never home, you still love him. But the joy comes from within mm. yourself. And mm. I think maybe that's what you're finding again. And also I've got that's, to... That's what's making your, your relationship richer now. And I've got to like, forgive Ryan. I've spent a lot of time being very angry at him and his career. Um, and the cow dung on his tackies. <laughs> <laughs> the poo on his tackies. The poo on his tackies. Um, because I've given up a lot. Yeah. He knows that now and with like, and he's also matured and a lot. Ryan has matured and grown so much. But is this light bothering you mm -hmm. on me? Um, but I'm, I am, not, I ha and I don't want to say I have grown and matured so much. I am busy. Yeah. I, I'm still hooking up along the way. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. We That's learn. the only way we grow. It's the only way we grow and evolve. Um, we've got to forgive ourselves when that happens, forgive others when they hurt us. Look, if somebody continuously hurts you, yeah. get them out of your life, you know. But, um, yeah, yeah there's, so there's, there's, there's this thing of... of uh, if you do if, if you do something wrong once, once it's a mistake if you do the same thing wrong again it is I saw this this week on Instagram yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's a, 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 was it? a um, it's a habit yes if you make the make the same mistake three times it's character yes that was it so that was it yeah yeah so we, we, we need to make mistakes. But I yeah. want to wrap this, this off. Is there, yeah, we could if, if anything ever. you want to tell people or women in the same situation as you, you know, and I, I do feel it's, it's, you know, men are so driven. We, we are so, you know, our egos, we, we've got a bit of a different ego than, than, the, 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 than the feminine. The feminine ego. Uh, we are the hunters. The um, gatherers. Mm. What what would it be? What what kind of advice would you give women in your position where they feel oh that their husbands are so successful but they feel so alone? Communicate. Um, the thing is, you need like just saying communicate is not enough because I did many years ago, and if you're communicating to a partner that doesn't hear you. It's like hitting your head against a wall. So unfortunately in a relationship, it is a two way street and you, uh, um, in, in the case with Ryan and I, what's lovely now is we are evolving together and I'm sharing this community that I'm now a part of with him and, sh and 
sharing and all the different healing modalities and all these things that I'm doing. Um, and he's very interested in a lot of it and is going to join me in some of the things that I take part in, which is wonderful. Um, I do think that you kind of, as a couple, need to be on a similar level or playing field to be able to understand one another. Um, so I think I want to clo you know, close off by saying I think it's very important for men and women, and I've heard this more and more on Instagram at, at the moment, and that's for men and women to move into their divine masculin masculinity and the woman into the divine feminine and really begin to understand those roles because I'm not a feminist. I am, however, very, I believe in equality big time. I've, I get very angry when I hear about the financial disparity between men and women, for example, and just what we earn. Um, but we are very different beings, men and women, and there are still roles to be had. I do want an alpha male in my life that takes care of me, protects me, provides, um, but at the same time is able to understand my nurturing side. Men, I, you know, I think the, the good advice as well is for all men and women to read, women are from Venus, men are from Mars, because that's a really good old book that just gives you the foundations of how we think and yeah. how we are so different. Yeah. And so in closing, I think it's just that we constantly need to seek. I think we're so busy in our lives right now, particularly these corporate men and women. We're so busy, we're so stressed, and we've stopped seeking and reading and learning mm. and growing. You cannot possibly know what your partner wants unless you talk to them often and have have date night and have time to really talk to each other and see one another yeah. and then beyond that read take your yeah. information yeah so 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 it's, it's basically treating someone as as if they're valuable and how do you do that is to spend Absol time with them absolutely that's the only thing that you can do you can't give someone gifts and say listen you're valuable it's all about time so for me it's it's being the happiest you that you can be is to be the most authentic that you can be. So mm -hmm. in other words, just being yourself and then being present and being conscious. I think that's where the magic is. Oh, nobody's present and conscious anymore. We just kind so, of, you know, hamster, okay. hamster wheel stuff. I look forward to our next conversation. We're going to have many. Yes. I could talk all day. <laughs> it's a it's a very broad subject. And I wanna I wanna help people. I wanna help women, I wanna help men. I just want people to start finding each other again and stop being so angry. I was angry for a long time. Not anymore. <laughs>